Good evening, everybody. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Brad Cohen. I'm the mayor of the township here of East Brunswick. I know that most people here tonight are from East Brunswick. Could I have a show of hands for those from those who are not from East Brunswick? Oh, okay, good showing. Thank you. That means that social media is actually working. So you do and should know that this evening, this is being uh, is being broadcast. EBTV is going to be recording this uh, meeting this evening for the presentation. And for those individuals who are not able to attend this evening, there, it will be put out as a YouTube, so they will have every opportunity to see the same presentation that you're having tonight. And the telephone numbers for anybody that has any questions or concerns will be the same uh, for them as it is for for all of you. So that anything that isn't answered this evening, or for those those people who are unable to attend have every opportunity to ask as many questions as they would like. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce people in the audience here who, I, who are part of the township governance, and I think you should know that they're here. We have with us this evening Councilman Kevin McAvoy. Could you please stand? Uh, Councilwoman Sharon Sullivan. We have with us our Director of Planning and Engineering, Keith Kipp. And the Township Business Administrator, Joseph Criscuolo. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking this evening. I want to leave this to the professionals who are here to talk about the problem at hand. So without any further ado, I'd like you all to meet the Executive Director for the MCUA, and that's Joseph Cryan. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, Appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. We're going to begin in just a moment with a video. I want to introduce the man who's handling the slides today, Chris Nori. Everyone say hello to Chris. All right. Um, and I just want to go over a couple things with you. If you did not get a copy of this handout, we have a few more. If you cannot find one or if we, for some reason, ran out, if you just go to mcua.com, this presentation is up online. And I believe it may also be, I'm not sure, Joe, but it may also be on the East Brunswick site as well. So feel free to follow along that way if you don't have an extra copy. A couple other logistic pieces here. We hopefully gave you all a notepad with a pen. This presentation is numbered. You'll see them on the bottom right-hand side. We'll start after the video. We would ask that we do the presentation first. So if you have questions, just refer to the page number. We will stay as long as it takes to answer all your questions. So we're not heading out the door anytime soon. Um, so with that in mind, what we'd like to do is begin a little bit about what the landfill is and what it does. We have a short video, we have two tonight, a video that opens and then just a quick presentation at the very end that summarizes, we think, uh, what we're gonna to present to you and gives you a visual of it as well. So we'd like to begin with a video that explains what the landfill does in our landfill of gas system, and then we'll begin the presentation to you. So, Chris, if you could. Well, most people think of waste disposal once you flush the toilet or once you throw your bag in the garbage, out of sight, out of mind. But I think it's something that people need to really understand because something needs to be done with waste so that when it goes back into the environment, it, it can assimilate and not have a negative impact. The fundamental purpose of the MCUA is environmental protection. We operate the wastewater treatment plant, we operate the landfill, both of which protect the environment, but also provide social and economic benefits to the people that we serve. Most people don't realize that the average resident in Middlesex generates about four pounds of trash a day in the Middlesex County landfill. We bury about 1,800 tons of trash daily. The wastewater, each person uses on average about 100 gallons of water a day. So from 800,000, you get about 80 million gallons of, of wastewater just from a general use by the population. So we're treating the equivalent of a uh, super tanker worth of wastewater every day. One of the things that the MCO is actually doing is taking waste products and putting them to beneficial use. The wastewater treatment uh, process actually utilizes uh, methane gas from the landfill 
to generate electricity for its operation. There's really very few wastewater treatment plants in the world that can claim to be completely self-sustaining as far as power is concerned. The MCUA setup is, is in fact state-of-the-art, so it's kind of a closed system with each division functioning together with the intent of minimizing impact to the environment. When a truck arrives at Middlesex County Landfill, the first thing it does is go to the scale where we will process whatever kind of material it is. And assuming it's refuse, it's going to go to the work phase, and that's the actual exposed trash. Basically what we do is we try to squeeze as much garbage in the smallest spaces available. And how we do that is we have machines called landfill compactors. They weigh about 90,000 pounds, and the idea is to just crush up the garbage and pack it in there as tight as we can. That serves a few different things. A, it breaks the garbage bags up, which will help with decomposition, and B, it enables us to maximize the lifespan of the facility. The refuse will start to break down within a few weeks of actually being in the landfill. This process, uh, this anaerobic decomposition, is a natural process. And then in this landfill, in all landfills, the predominant decomposition is done by methogen bacteria. And they give off two gases that we're very interested in, carbon dioxide and methane, CH4. The actual landfill gas uh, that's generated at the Middlesex County Landfill is withdrawn from the landfill with vacuum pumps that actually suck the gas out of the landfill and convey it to the wastewater treatment plant where we can actually use it for generating electricity and gas turbines. The benefit of the landfill gas energy project, the generation of electricity, reduces our electrical cost here at wastewater treatment plant and also reduces the emissions at, uh, at the landfill of greenhouse gases from otherwise discharging the gas into the atmosphere. We are generating approximately over 300,000 kilowatt hours of energy a day, which is about the amount of energy that 10 to 12,000 homes use on, a, uh, on any given day. The electricity is used to power pumps throughout the plant. Uh, it's also used in our aeration tanks for mixing the wastewater with oxygen, which we also generate on site. This oxygen is used by organisms in our secondary treatment step of the plant to treat the uh, wastewater. To us, these materials are, are waste materials. To these organisms, are a food source. So we're basically mimicking what happens in, in nature by what we're doing here in the treatment plant. About every day we collect samples to let us know how well the uh, treatment plant is operating. We add sodium hypochlorite, which is bleach for disinfection. So by the time the water leaves the, uh, the treatment plant, it, it looks clean, it, it smells clean, and it's basically the same as the river water. The first things we do is concentrate all those solids. We add lime to, the, uh, to these materials, create a synthetic looking material that we call metal life. It's a uh, soil-like material. Uh, that soil-like material is then used at the landfill to cover garbage. One of the big misconceptions about landfill is that it's actually an open sore of trash, but at the end of every day, all the garbage is covered. I believe that because it's a state-of-the-art facility, that it provides the residents with a certain uh, level of comfort and that they know that their refuse is being handled safely and in a manner that minimizes impact to the environment. Some folks come in uh, while the video was going on. The video basically shows you a little bit about our landfill of gas project. We'd like to make sure that you have the opportunity to collect a notepad with a pen, which is right over in the center of the room. And that we'd ask that you just simply hold your questions till the end. You'll see page references on the handout and up on the top right, so that you can reference your question to a page. In other words, while you're waiting, you won't forget and you'll know where to go back to. Um, so let me begin by introducing some of the folks that are with us tonight people I have the privilege of working with at the MCUA each day. To my right, uh, resident of East Brunswick, Brian Murray. Uh, to his right, Bob Leslie. Uh, Brian, by the way, is our general landfill supervisor, uh, superintendent. Bob Leslie is our landfill engineer. To his right is Rich Fidemont, our former executive director and director of special projects. 
in the back standing waiting to hand out more pads is our uh, landfill uh, our landfill uh, division manager Paul Clark um, I should give you a better title than that Paul sorry and our chief engineer Joaquin Gonzalez we have other folks here or the intention of having folks here is to make sure we answer each and every one of your questions to the best that we can so with that in mind let's take a look at the this is the, the first slide so what we do at the landfill a little bit of it I want to start with the story with you um, that one of the individuals I just introduced to you actually tells. Two years ago, he got a phone call from someone on Ellison Street. Ellison Street, if you live in Pine Ridge, is the street right there. That individual asked, would you tell me where the landfill is? And we said, are you in the front of your house or the back? And he said, I'm in the front. He said, do me a favor, take the phone, walk to the back, look out the window. See that big mound? That's us. That's the Middlesex County landfill. Um, the reason I tell you the story is, is because we understand that not everyone knows what we do or knows what's going on in the landfill, so we want to give you some facts that go with it. People ask all the time, are you still open? The answer is, yes, obviously we are. Right? How long will you be open? People say, the realtor told me you're closed. You're closing tomorrow. You're closing next week. Some of these, I see heads nodding. Folks, the way permits work, and we're permitted, is actually through the amount of trash you collect and so on. But if you do the math, we are permitted and open until 2030. So we will be your neighbors for quite a bit of time. And I tell you, even if we close then, we'll be your neighbors for a long period of time afterwards. That is our mission, to make sure we are quality neighbors to each and every one of you that enhance your quality of life, as opposed to the reason we're here tonight. Now, when you do a public presentation, one of the things you want to do is work and have an audience with you. They say the worst thing you can do when you begin is to apologize. But on behalf of all of us, and especially me, as the executive director, Joe Cryan, I want to apologize for the inconvenience and the impact to your quality of life, especially over the past few weeks. We know it has been difficult. We're going to actually point to the date, which I think some of you will refer to, point to what we think is the cause of that, but take you through what we do in the landfill, what our correction policy is and what it means. A uh, couple other things as you look at that chart. People say, can you, everybody really generate four pounds? You heard Brian say it in the video. The landfill every day collects two million tons of trash. Okay, that's, excuse me, 2,000 tons of trash. That's four million pounds. That's a lot of trash. Anybody here host Thanksgiving at the house or Christmas? When you put the turkey in, you made sure that the hefty bag with the blue strings was really tied right, right? When you put it in the can because you didn't want to smell it. That ended up in the landfill. All right, the haulers are different by town, but they bring it to the Middlesex County landfill. We service every community in Middlesex County. We service 880,000 residents. Um, and we obviously have um, a commitment to you that we do it in the best possible way. One other thing people say to me, is that a 24-7 operation over there? Is it a recycling? We are not the recycling operation. And we are not open 24-7. We're open about 300 days a year. Five days a week, obviously, excluding some of the holidays. Think about it. When they're off taking, collecting your trash, we're probably not there too. And half days on Saturdays. The end of our day, one of the things that I would like you to know is, is when we finish a work day, before we finish, we have to apply cover to all the trash we collect. So if any of you think like, hey, do they just drop that stuff there? Like head on home? Not the way it works. We apply six to 12 inches of a cover each and every day. One last thing before I ask Chris to flip the chart. It's a big landfill. I'm gonna take you through the acreage and all that. But think about your town. Sometimes it's divided either by section or by zip code. Our landfill is divided by cells. So the way we do it is each area is a particular cell. So just when you see us mention a couple cells tonight, it just means a particular area of the landfill. Okay, so with that. So as you saw in the video, um, what the landfill gas energy system is, and you can see methane, 
By the way, I'm not going to read this to you. I hate when people read PowerPoint to me, uh, and I hope you, you don't mind either. Uh, but you can see that methane is, is what's created. We collect the methane. The methane is the gas that we use to create the energy that allows us to run the central treatment plant in Sayreville. Uh, the 16 megawatts of energy that's referred to there, that's high quality green energy. And we think it serves a variety of purposes. But as you take a look at that, I do want you to understand there are three sources of odors, right, for the reason we're all here tonight. There are three of them, and I want to make sure you understand all three, all right? One is what I just mentioned to you, four million pounds of trash each and every day of collection, right, by far the biggest one. Second, we create a product in our central treatment plant, you all help create it probably every day, called Meadow Life. It's a cake biosolid product. Think about it. after that Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner, I promised you help create some Meadow Life. All right. With that in mind, we use Meadow Life as part of one part of the cover we apply to the trash. And then finally, and probably the main thing we're going to talk about tonight, is gas emissions. The emission of gas, when you all smell and you say that gas smell, which when you call and we ask you what it is, what type of smell, we do that for a very specific reason. And the majority of what we believe are your complaints recently come from gas emissions. Chris, if you can. So, I think the main reason you're here tonight, right? Why does it smell? What are you doing about it? And when's it going to get better? All right? So I just want to make sure we're on the same wavelength in terms of what the rest of this presentation will answer. So with that, go ahead, Chris. So our landfill gas system is undergoing some significant, significant capital investments and redesign. So I want you to think about it for a minute. So for those of you that have lived, for example, in any part of the area, but Pine Ridge, you've seen, as we just chatted about with some of us, the landfill used to be this high. Now it's this high. Right? And by the way, when you apply trash, when you take that 4 million pounds of trash each and every day and you put it down, it settles. All right, so if you think about it, if you put down, for argument's sake, 50 feet of trash, it settles to something closer to 40 feet. All right, so this, it condenses itself, and it creates that gas in the meantime of that settling. We have been in this great big landfill for the past month and a half, although we currently have stopped for the most part. We have been digging holes inside the landfill. We'll explain to you why, which is because we needed more pumps, we needed to fix our system. Those holes helped create gas emissions, which helped create the reason we're here tonight. Uh, that and the weather. Um, when I approved this project and when we moved forward on it, I approved it for December and thought it'd be done by the end of December. We've gotten most of it done now. Um, but it, it has rained every day. Um, and you're going to see it's the rainiest 2018. Rain in landfills, a little bit, are great. The highest rain amount in New Jersey's history in any given year, not so good. Um, it helps create our delays. I'm not looking for any excuses. We thought we'd be colder, a little less in terms of inclement weather. Simply hasn't worked out that way. Next chart. So the rotten egg smell. Everybody know the rotten egg smell? Oh, yeah, right, right. What is that? First off, the rotten egg smell is bad for your nose, but very little else, all right? As you can see by the chart, it's hydrogen sulfide. So one of the questions that obviously gets answered is, especially if you have, say, nine-year-old fourth graders in the room, hey, is it, what does it do to my health? Does it affect me or doesn't it? What does it have a long-term effect? Well, right now today, and I want to make sure I express this to you exactly correctly. Right now today, our permit does not have a limit on hydrogen sulfide, right? So today, in theory, we don't have a written limit. We know, because we stay in touch with regulations, we stay in touch with what's going to be required, that in our next permitting process, that the limit we anticipated to be 30 parts per billion, all right? Everybody with me so far? So we don't have a firm number. We anticipate it being 30 parts per billion. In the middle of December, in the middle of all this, we went out and air tested. We tested the perimeter of the landfill. In other words, not up on top, but the perimeter, what's closest, what's going to you. And when we did that, just about all of our averages were five, five parts per billion. 
right? We are very, very much, which is very consistent, below what we anticipate our requirement to be. Right? I want to make sure everybody knows that, knows that we're operating well below what we perceive these limits to be. And, and I'll take you through some more of those facts as we move forward. Okay. Good. We're going to ask questions at the end. Just at the end? Yeah, we have the pad. That's why we gave you the pad. I'll go over any question you want. We will be here all night. Okay. Or hopefully less. So one of the things about landfills is it collects water. Anybody ever drive behind a garbage truck where there's leachate coming out? You notice it? Okay. It's very unpleasant, right? Landfills also collect water. We have a very high quality, and it's not part of our design leachate collection system, but this landfill, which by the way is the second largest landfill in the state, just FYI, um, we continually have to remove that water, all right? And when we don't, bad things happen. If you're collecting gas and you have a lot of water, your screen gets flooded, your pipes get flooded, so you don't collect gas. What happens to gas you don't collect? It emits. And you all have the result of that, especially over the past few weeks. So how much rainwater is there? Next chart. In New Jersey, last year, we had the highest amount of, land, of rainfall on record. And I do want to make, the reason I bring up the water to you is because of a couple stats that I want to make sure you understand. In 2017, where you see 51 inches, and in 2018, I'm going to give you some charts or some visuals to kind of work that through. In 2017, that amount of rain equated to 272 million gallons of water hitting the landfill. That's a lot of water. All right? We retained, in other words, just because it hit the landfill doesn't mean it went in. We retained 146 million of those gallons. All right? What does it mean? It means it's seeping the water and catching it like a sponge. I promise there's a purpose to this. All right. In 2018, 200, 339, million, 339 million gallons of water hit the landfill. All right. By the way, 339 million, just to put that in perspective, if anybody's been in an Olympic-sized pool, that is 514 Olympic-sized pools. But we only retained 75 million gallons. All right. And we're going to show you that because we increased our cover we increase the opportunity for that water to go elsewhere, to go down and be collected. That's important, as you'll see in one of our points moving forward. So in the last two years, we've had 611 million gallons um, and a whole, about 925 Olympic-sized pools actually hit the landfill. There's been a lot of rain. Rain's really hurt us in terms of our work on our slopes. You know the sloping area? You've all seen the landfill, right? It's not big and rain. It's got slopes. Think about it. If you're putting extraction equipment, we're trying to fix a pipe that's in there. Rain creates conditions that make that unsafe. I'm not looking for excuses. I want to be as candid as, and as upfront tonight as possible in terms of what we're doing. So why does, why does it smell? Well, there's no single factor. I took you and remind you again, there's three factors. The predominant one for tonight being our gas emissions. The gas system will be there as long as the landfill is there. It needs to be fixed. We need to make these investments on it. We need it for your quality of life. We need it to protect it. And it has to be done. The idea of turning it off only leaves a big source of methane in the middle of nowhere that can only emit. All right? I assure you, it's a necessary product. So, but what happened? So why are we here? Because the last few weeks, everybody enjoyed the last few weeks? No, not much at all, right? Not at all. More than all, right? But I want to talk to you about one specific. There has been a noticeable change since the Friday before December, November 17th, Friday before Thanksgiving, November 17th. Why? We can point to the date. We changed, as simple as this sounds, we changed the gasket near our Edison pump station, seven miles down from the landfill. Now the way it works is we collect gas, our gas goes in, Gas, gas turbines and a steam turbine could change that to, to, as we talked about earlier, green energy. The gas could put us in a situation where we simply weren't able to balance our line. Right? You can only have so much oxygen. You'd like to get more methane. You'd like to pull more from the landfill. 
for lack of a better way to put it, we lost the recipe. Right? We've had significant problems. Right? In the past week, anybody notice it's been better in the it has been better in the past week, last seven days? It's last seven by the way, we haven't received a complaint we've received two complaints from East Brunswick in the past seven days. Seven. I'm not dismissing any others and don't throw any tomatoes, just as a fact. All right? It's been better because our system and our pipes and our tie-ins have become better. Some of the things that we planned for to be completed have been completed. We've noticed a difference. We're pulling that gas out of the landfill. It's a big deal. I know it's boring and it may be a little TMI, but it's a very, very big deal. The system itself has been corrected. We know we point to a date. We know the problem. We work it each and every day. The investment that we're making in this, by the way, because people say to me the financial investment matters. Um, the investment in this system is $15 million. Uh, when you include the corrections that we're making in our collection system at the plant for our energy system, which is over five, it's almost, it's north of $21 million. We are making a financial commitment to make sure that we have this done correctly. Next chart. I just mentioned to you, probably jumped ahead a little bit, but as you can see, we've invested, and as I just told you, the numbers. Um, the landfill size, I'm going to take you through in just a couple moments. But we, the way this gas collection system works, and one of the changes I'm going to talk to you about is, we put our waste all over the landfill. The landfill up front is over 100 acres up on top. I want you to think about that. It's 100 acres. It's 170 feet high. Does anybody ever sit in their yard? Hopefully you all get the chance to do so again. But you sit in your yard and you watch the wind blow on the top of the trees and it's not windy where you are, right? We're higher. The way we do our business needs to change accordingly. And I'm going to talk to you about the plan that we're doing that with, how to reduce that size. Think about it. If there's 100 acres up top, and we're putting trash around, that's 100 acres that, frankly, the wind can pick up and go to 10 Harrell Court or some other at 12 McGuire and all the rest of it. We know that. So what we're going to talk to you about a little bit tonight is the adjustments in terms of uh, our work plan, how we operate, and the adjustments accordingly. Go ahead, Chris. So when will it get better? We did finish, and we're going to take you through some time frames. We're going to, we did finish the majority of our work in December. We were delayed a bit by the weather. We have improved, especially over the past few days, the collection system that is so important. In other words, we're taking the gas out of the landfill again as opposed to the gas emitting out. Right? Doesn't eliminate all the source of odors. I am never here to tell you that as we say, we bat a thousand. That is not happening. We collect four million pounds of, tra four million pounds of trash a day. All right? We are never ever going to be odor free. If we tell you that, we're fibbing. All right? Just the, the nature of the beast as to what we do. But we need to do some other things. The first is, is that we completed in 2018, what kind of work did you do? We drilled seven wells. Remember I told you we were putting holes into this landfill? We did. Those wells are there to collect the gas and pump it out, okay? As well as remove water and some other things. We did that. Um, cell eight, for, how many people here live in Pine Ridge? <laughs> Hi, Pine Ridge. <laughs> Uh, uh, all the way to the end of Pine Ridge. I count any part of it. We've we've all no. then you then you yeah then you live in Pine Ridge yeah. too. Um, cell eight is is the cell that cell is eight and nine are the two cells that affect your quality of life the most. Cell nine is the one that borders you. It's the one where we just finished our tie-ins. Cell eight. Anytime the wind picks up, our infamous what wind, Rich? Our east wind. When it's an east wind, it goes to Pine Ridge. All right, we're quite aware of that. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see. We well, hopefully we have some things that that improve that for you. But we do have more work. By March of 2019, we'll have implemented another 13 vertical wells into Cell 8. Cell 8, without TMIing it, needs more well collection to collect the gas. If not, it will emit. It's a significant investment, and we continue to do so. The high-capacity water pumping system, 
The reason I talked to you about the rain earlier and the Olympic sized pools and the millions of gallons is that water is sitting in the landfill. Just think about it. When you go out and put out your trash and you leave the lid and it stinks, whatever happened to you, think about it. It's inside our landfill. It needs to come out. So what we're doing is instead of using pneumatic tubes that take out 15, 18 gallons of water a minute, we are investing in a high capacity water pumping system. What it means is it'll take out 256 gallons a minute. What that means is we'll drain out the landfill, which we believe will reduce odors. It's a big deal. We had to go get a contractor. We have to still finish this project, but the investment is significant. It's part of the $15 million investment, but we think it'll also help. All of these together will help contribute to hopefully a better quality of life for all of you. Uh, next. So in addition, when will it get better? Well, we're going to show you this visually at the end, but it's a great big landfill, right? In terms of size, by the way, total landfill, 315 acres. The Middlesex County landfill, which is on top of an older one, is 247 acres. The top area, that work face area that I talked to you about, that whole, like when you drive by and you see the, the caterpillars up top or the trucks, that whole open area today is a little north of 100 acres. That's a lot. It's a lot up there in the sky. All right. And second to that, what we're doing is we'll, that 100 acres we're reducing in a variety of different ways. The one that matters the most to you is we reduced it. We actually should be 112. We put 12 acres and put a temporary cap on that along the eastern portion of the landfill. We'll show you that visually. We're covering 34 more acres. Um, HDPE, by the way, basically means liner. That's all it is. It's a liner. All right. Um, we're covering an additional 34 acres. All right. By as you can see on the date of there, uh, certainly by the summer, maybe sooner, it'll be a soil cover. In other words, we'll use top cover to to limit it, and then we'll put a liner over it. The soil will be in the spring. The liner by the summer. It's a big deal. All right. And then it'll seal off a significant portion of that. But then I also want to make sure you understand what we're doing with the rest of the active area. So that should leave up top, instead of 100 plus acres, around 66 acres. Right? So with that 66, what are you doing? Because the less opportunity there is for emissions, the better off we all are. So of that 66 acres, instead of our previous, our previous approach to business, which was to put it where we felt was necessary, we've laid out a plan where we're only utilizing around 25 acres, around 25 acres at a time. So we can build our gas pipeline system inside there, as opposed to what we're doing now, catching up, and then move accordingly. So what does that mean? Well, it essentially means that there's 40 acres where we're not throwing trash on there, right? And a system that'll be working properly. We think that's really important. I understand it may be a little technical. Hopefully the visual will help you see it as well. But we think it's a significant way we change our business model and the way we do business, and we think it should help everybody in this room. Next. As you can see, the final cap, which I mentioned to you, Pine Ridge people, Edgeboro Road, right? It's your favorite area, right? We have to, never mind all the trucks, but it affects your area. The 18 acres is our, uh, you'll see it in the visual as well, but there's a permanent cap coming there. It's one of the earliest decisions we made last May to make sure that we applied for. We can't just put down a cap. We work, in essence, for the New Jersey DEP. All right, so our permitting and the applications to do so, we expect that that cap construction will begin in late spring. We'll finish it early part of 2020. But in essence, when you're driving down Edgeboro Road now, all of that side that you see will be a permanent cap. That's a big deal, again, especially if you're part of Pine Ridge. We're, we're, you know, we very much understand what we want to do. What is, the, what is this cap? Just so what do you mean? We don't know what a cap is. What, what is the cap? It's something it will begin later in the spring. You'll close it? Yeah, it's a permanent cap. You'll, and ultimately, it'll end up looking like grass. Okay? It's a cover. Words, the, no more garbage, is going, no more garbage is going there. That's correct. Okay. In addition, in addition, and a couple of you asked about this as well. We'll show it to you now. We currently have a misting system. In essence, if you were to 
had the good fortune, and we are going to invite you to a tour of the landfill. All right, but if you come to the top, I know you're all looking forward to that. All right, bring your lunch. Um, that you would see today that there is a misting system there. The intent of the misting system is it's portable. And the idea is, is that depending on where the wind's going, but in particular in the areas that are adjacent to Pine Ridge, that there's a misting system in an attempt to catch, capture odors. We know and have been looking for better technologies to do that. As a matter of fact, a couple of folks in this room wearing suits maybe for the first time tonight, uh, have traveled to different parts, of the, different parts of New Jersey and different parts of the country. We made our selection in terms of what odor system we're going to use. I know a couple folks here told me earlier when I had a chance to say hello that for some reason they thought this odor control system was starting uh, in January of this year. I'm not sure where that came from. Let me debunk that. We selected this system, I think we selected in October. October, November? November. November. Um, so what it is, is it's an it's a odor control system. It emits vapors, and I'm going to talk to you about safety data sheets in a minute for your concerns about health. All right, it emits odors, it emits them up to, but basically 30 feet high, a vapor system that in essence knocks down, or hopefully knocks down odors. By the way, when you spray, when you spray Febreze, for example, or some of us that remember Lysol, um, basically what you're doing is you're putting a heavier molecule on top of the odor so it knocks it down. The difference here is, is it creates, for lack of a better way to put it, a higher fence. So the benefit is, is it's portable, so we can move it. And secondly, by creating a higher fence, ultimately, we hope we're not coming into Pine Ridge. That's, those are the, that's the idea. Uh, it's a two-phase system. There's one literally around the active area that we work. And then there's a second that goes around our entire perimeter. Not that you care because it's your quality of life. It's north of a million and a half bucks to do. But we want to make sure that we have it done. We anticipate this should occur around April or so. Uh, it, right? Is that correct on the time frame? Summer is what we're saying. Should be a little bit earlier if things fall into place. Um, we find that to be a, another part or a part of the solution to the puzzle. So next chart. A little bit about who we are, because I think folks have an opinion on this. First off, we're your neighbors. I know that may sound a little crazy from a guy who lives in Union County, as most of you probably know. Um, there are 203 employees in the MCUA. 92 of them either reside in Sayreville, South Amboy, East Brunswick, or South River. 45% of our employees. A little bit more about us. We do support, we do a lot of, a lot of tours and environmental work that we support students with. Uh, that tour last week, um, for example, we had a tour last week, one of the birding folks came in, bald eagle up on top, three red-tailed hawks. In the past, we've had goldfinches, right? The New Jersey State Bird, a variety of other birding folks. We do pay taxes. We do contribute to your communities in financial ways. I know that's come up considerably like, hey, you guys don't do anything, we do. We do make investments in financial investments. Um, anybody here compost or use leaf compost? 20 acres to the left, if you were driving down Edgeboro Road, 20 acres over there is landfill. For lack of a better way to put it, our property, which sounds parochial, but we donated it to make sure that we can use it for leaf composting um, here at, for East Brunswick. We obviously provide a buffer. I know it's hard to believe, but we actually do. And the Audubon Society, I mentioned to you a little bit as well. Um, you can flip that. Okay. So to summarize, and then we'll do all the questions you like. So why does it smell? We dug holes. We had problems with our gas emission. What are we doing about it? We're upgrading our gas emission. We stopped digging holes. We have new capping projects. We're making investments in a new order control system and taking the water out of the landfill. When will it get better? Well, we think it's gotten a little bit better now. And ev not everybody will agree, I understand that, but a little better over the past few days and we think it's gonna get progressively better uh, throughout 2019. You saw the dates that we talked to you about it. Um, and then finally, we think because we've implemented a smarter plan than we've worked with previously. Reducing a work face, planning properly, instead of just, for lack of a better way to put it, all around. Building lifts, 
that we think for the future will be in a better position to have our systems improve the gas collection and the quality of life that's important to you and to us. Uh, finally, I want to, before we close with our video, I do want to make a couple points that are here on there. Um, we will come back. We suggested June. I didn't talk to the mayor or to Joe or anybody or to council folks, who, by the way, are tremendous advocates. Um, Dave's a big redial guy in terms of what he's doing over there. Appreciate that, Mayor, and Joe's not bashful. Um, we understand that, so we will come back and report. And in addition, we thought it might be a good idea to have you come see the landfill. Since some of you thought it was closed, a big mountain, what does it do, all that, we selected the date of May 11th. It's an arbitrary selection date because the weather's warmer, right? There's nothing magical to it. We picked a Saturday, all right? Uh, What's that? It's never gone to place. The landfill? Mm -hmm. When we opened this, we had a brief discussion. We're permitted. We're permit, the way it works is our permit allows us the collection of trash. Based on our permit, the estimate of that is that we'll be open until at least 2030, 11 years from now. So the focus here is on how can we make and be high quality good neighbors to you. Okay. So with that, we have a closing, we have a closing and take two minutes. Hopefully we'll show you some of the visuals about what we spoke about here, and then we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And on behalf of all of us, if I don't say it, thank you again for coming. We apologize again. Um, actually, we do have one more chart, right? Yep. yep. Um, I thought this was important. One of our folks, uh, somebody I really admire, handed me this, and I thought important enough to put up here. We're dedicated employees, besides being your neighbors. We're professionals who care. Um, we continually assist the county, other, other government agencies, and all of our municipalities. We're open during emergencies. For example, in Sandy, we were open for 83 straight days. Any of you that threw anything out, we took it, if you recall. By the way, something not every other landfill did. Um, when you see fires, blizzards, acts of nature that impact people, we make adjustments accordingly because that's our responsibility, not only as neighbors, residents, but as people who are committed to making sure that every community is, is in a better spot. So we know we've got to improve. I'm not coming to you and telling you anything other than we have to improve. We've presented to you what I hope is a plan to show that we're doing that. And with that, let's take a look at the visual. <laughs> 